lovely? What is? It's a postcard from Miss Dingle next door. Well, that's a waste of a stamp, isn't it? She could have just shouted over the edge. <laughs> She's on holiday. Ah, oh, she... First time out of England, but no trouble with the language. Uh -huh. Wish you were here. Uh, where's it sent from? Fentner, Isle of Wight. <laughs> I see. Anything interesting in your post? Problems. Oh, what? Income tax? No. Uh, phone bill? No. Rates? No. What then? Bathrooms. <laughs> Dear Terence Bedford of 71 Popular Avenue, Purley, you have been personally se selected to enter our Design a Dream Bathroom competition. I wonder why they chose me. They probably heard how long you spend in there, dreaming. <laughs> All you Terence Bedford of 71 Popular Avenue, Purley, have to do is to arrange the following items in order of importance. Item one, a bidet. Well, that's fairly low down in the order of priorities. <laughs> no, I wouldn't say that. I'd put a bidet rather high up. <laughs> Would you? That'd defeat the object, wouldn't it? <laughs> You'd need a step ladder to wash your feet. <laughs> Come on, what's next? Uh, heated toilet seat. Hmm, that's a little unnecessary, isn't it? Unnecessary, perhaps, but on a chilly morning. Oh, very welcome. <laughs> Jacuzzi. Well, that's ridiculous. What is? Jacuzzi. I mean, what would you want with a motorbike in the bathroom? <laughs> a jacuzzi isn't a motorbike, Terry. Huh? No. It's one of those big heated baths that blows bubbles, you know. Mm. In America, people invite their friends round to join them. What? In the bath? Yes. <laughs> Blowing bubbles? <laughs> well, the bath blows the bubbles. Ah. Oh. Well, which of our friends would you invite to share a bar? Oh, I don't know. They'd have to be very close. Well, it depends on the size of the bar, doesn't it? <laughs> Malcolm and Beatty. Oh, no, I'm not having them in our bar. <laughs> At the door. Mm. Beatty and I are spending the day in town together. Well, I'm still not having them in my bath. Especially Malcolm, he'd sink all my boats. <laughs> Hello, June. Uh, Beatty's at uh, the end in a minute. She's just by the car. Oh, what's she doing? She's changing a wheel. Oh, no. Well, you can give her a hand if you want to. <laughs> what's the matter with her now? She's dropped something on her foot. What? The car. <laughs> uh, good morning, Malcolm. It most certainly is not. Now, listen. Oh. Huh? Terry, mm -hmm. you remember last month when I was supposed to be at the Right Way Lifesavers launch in... No, <laughs> Well, I wasn't. Well, why not? Well, let's just say I got diverted. Where to? The Stag Motel. Maidenhead. <laughs> Maidenhead? Yes. Instead of Lowestoft? Yes. That's a hell of a diversion. <laughs> let's just say I'll tell you the whole sordid truth. Oh, please do. Please and do. that fascinating creature, Lola Philpotts. Who? <laughs> she works in the cult department. <laughs> got a face of an innocent schoolgirl and a body of a beautiful baggage. Ah, now I've got her. I bet you wish you had. <laughs> Last month, she seemed to have set her sights on me, mm. and she got me to book a double room at the Stag Motel Maidenhead, and mm. then mm. she didn't turn up. Ah, well, so was you right for cheating on Beatty? I didn't have a chance to cheat. I spent a miserable night on my own, mm. and then, foolishly, I paid the bill with my credit card. So Beatty found my monthly statement and wanted to know what I was doing in Maidenhead mm. instead of Lowestoft. Faulty compass? No, no, no. <laughs> there was a celebration lunch at the hotel, so mm. I told Beatty mm. that Sir Dennis had sent someone else to the launch in Lowestoft mm. and sent me to the lunch in Maidenhead. Yeah. So yeah. if Beatty asks about the launch, yeah. tell her it was a lunch. Uh, a, a lunch instead of a launch? In Maidenhead, not Lowestoft. Uh, a Maidenhead launch? No, 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 no. no, 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 no. The launch yeah. was in Lowestoft. Lowestoft launch. And the Maidenhead Maidenhead lunch. Maidenhead lynch. Lunch. 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 Mind you, she may not mention it. Oh, God, I hope she doesn't. <laughs> but if she does, I'm relying on you to save my marriage. Well, if you're so keen on saving it, stop making deposits elsewhere. <laughs> you should have given Beatty a bit more instruction. I managed to remove the wheel, but how do I get the tyre off? Well, you did. It's like Terry's spare tyre. It's a permanent fixture. <laughs> Terry? Oh, you probably think I'm a tiresome feather brain ninny. Well, of course you're not tiresome. <laughs> Last month, when Marker was away for the weekend... Uh, now, 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 Beatty, you're not still going on about that. Where was he? 
And what was he doing? Ah, oh, well, well, I know the weekend that you mean very well. Yeah, you see, he was meant to be at a lynching, uh, lunching. <laughs> launching. <laughs> launching, launching uh, a product at Ravenscroft. Lower stuff. Uh, lower stuff. <laughs> but at the last minute, Sir Dennis, uh, Sir Dennis sent him to lunch, uh, to, to, to attend. <laughs> To attend a lunch at Maidenhead. Maiden. Uh, maiden. Maiden. Uh, maiden. 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 Maidenhead. Maidenhead. Sorry. 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 Are you sure, Terry? You're not just saying this to help hide his shabby infidelities, are you? Yes. What? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm not saying it to hide his flabby infidelities. <laughs> oh, Malcolm. Uh, well, if you're entirely satisfied, I'll give you a hand with the wheel. Will you ever forgive me for doubting you? Well, I'll try, BT, but uh, it's not going to be easy. Oh. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, well, just time for another cup of tea. <laughs> How could you? Well, I've only had two so far. <laughs> I'm talking about Beatty. How could you fib like that? Fib? Oh, don't try to deny it. I can always tell. Mm. You get all flustered and your ears twitch. I, I, was, I was not fibbing. They're twitching now. Well, <laughs> you must know. Beatty found out through Malcolm's credit card that he'd been somewhere he shouldn't have been, but nothing happened. Thank heavens I've never had Beatty's problems. And you never will have, June. And if I ever felt like fooling around, Malcolm's stupidity will have taught me a big lesson. Good. Mm, you have to be careful, very careful, how you use your credit cards. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, Terry, if you've got something that interests her, she can be positively hypnotic when she bats those great clumps of eyelashes at you. <laughs> what? What? She bats those great clumps of eyelashes. Strong men are turned to jelly. Yeah, well, you just put her out of your head. We are happily married men. Happily? Well, one of us certainly is. Lola led me on, Terry. I'm telling you, that girl is a climber. Yeah, and you're a rambler. So if I were you, I should prune myself hard back. <laughs> If you think you're immune to Lola's charms, now's your chance to prove it. What? Now, I'll do the talking. Oh, hello, Lola. Have you met Terry Medford? Sorry, Mr. Harris, in a hurry. Oh, well, aren't you going to congratulate him? On what? He's just won the pools. Hey? Really? <laughs> Was it a big win, Mr. Medford? Half a million. Half a million? Malcolm. How wonderful, Frank. You must be very excited. Well, it does, it does mean a lot to me, It's actually. always been one of my dreams to win the pools or meet some lucky man who has. Mm. Have you a wonderful woman to share it with you? No, not really, just a wife. And... <laughs> what, what, what am I saying? But my wife is wonderful and I have won the pool, so I'm afraid you'll just have to uh, back your frumps... back your frumps <laughs> uh, somewhere else. <laughs> Idiot! I've just one thing to say to you, Malcolm. What? Oh, I see what you mean. <laughs> Bedford? Yes, sir. Busy? Oh, no, sir. Why the devil not? Oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, relax, relax. Just my little joke. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very, very funny, sir. <laughs> you... <laughs> yeah, you, you caught me that time, sir. <laughs> All right, it's not that funny. <laughs> Now, I have come to ask your advice. Oh. In the strictest confidence, you understand, you are not to mention this to a living soul. Sir, you have my word of honour as a member of the RAC and a, <laughs> and a founder member of the Watford Band of Hope, and I think, <laughs> I think that means something, sir. Not a lot. <laughs> now, you and your wife have always been very kind to my personal secretary. Oh, Miss Fennell. Oh, yes, we're very fond of the old girl. Yes, well, unfortunately, the old girl is very fond of me. Very, very fond. In fact, not to mince matters, I'm rather afraid the silly old trout has fallen in love with me. In love with you? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> crumbs, you're serious. <laughs> well, of course I'm serious. Some time ago, I made the mistake of opening up to her. <laughs> opening up... <laughs> opening up what, to us? I should never have asked her to oblige me that evening. <laughs> oblige you? Well, it was while my housekeeper was away ill and I was all alone in that great house of mine, so I invited Miss Fennell round to supper. It was then that I asked her to do something for me which might have given her the wrong impression about our relationship. <laughs> Not 
too personal a question. So what, what did you ask her to do? I asked her if she would take home my washing. Washing? <laughs> washing? Well, I never learned to work the machine, and I don't trust laundries, all those Chinese scampering them. So, so she took it home with her? Yes, and she made such a brilliant job of it. She has done it ever since. I didn't have the heart to deprive her of it. She had, uh, um, how shall I put it? Uh, grown accustomed to your smalls. <laughs> Something like that, yes. So now I shall just have to make a clean break of it. You're, you're not going to sack her? No, 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 no. No, I shall boot her upstairs into computer records and uh, bring in some fresh blood as my person. Personal secretary. So I thought I would take her out to lunch and break it to her then. Good idea, sir. In. Oh, sorry, Miss. Terry, I'm, oh, I'm so sorry, Sir Dennis. Oh, oh, Mrs. Mesh, what a pleasure. Always delighted to see you. It's just that I'm going shopping and Terry left with the checkbook by mistake. What makes you think it was a mistake? <laughs> you, won't, you won't go mad, will you? Of course not. Beatty's with me. Well, she's no guarantee of sanity. Oh, I do envy you, Medford, having the little woman to do the shopping for you. Oh, I wouldn't, sir. Many a man loses his balance when his wife goes shopping. Yes, <laughs> but they have someone who's prepared to brave the rigours of the high street. Well, it's not too late, Sir Dennis. It's just a question of finding the right wife. Oh, you... You don't think I'm too old for marriage again? Oh, definitely not. Oh, I'm younger than Cary Grant, you know. Yeah, but look at Cary Grant and look at... <laughs> look, 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 at look at how he's aged recently. So. Strictly on to do, Mrs. Mitford. Just recently I have felt the need for a close female relationship. A warm, understanding, womanly woman who would be a companion in my middle years and a nurse at my end. Yes, Sir Dennis. Oh, no, Miss Dennis. Would you mind frightfully if I, if I left now and met you at the restaurant? You see, I just want to pop into Twinkies. Twinkies? I want them to look at my hair. Why? What's wrong with it? Nothing. But this is rather a special occasion, and I did so want to look my best. I don't give a damn how you look. This is lunch, not a beauty contest. <laughs> Isn't he adorable? Adorable? You know, in the past few months, we've drawn closer together, and now with this lunch, somehow it may make us as close as any man and woman can be. How do you mean? When you were here, you saw him when I came in. He's looking for a woman to share his life and to nurse his end. <laughs> That's obviously, obviously why he's asking out for lunch. You mean, yes, Mrs. Medford, I think he's going to pop the question. Oh, crumbs. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you so much. Miss um, Fennell, perhaps you shouldn't count your chickens. Wise advice, Mr. Medford. But somehow, deep, deep down inside me, I sense his intentions. A woman does, you know. Yes, but suppose this lunch is about something absolutely different. Mr. Medford, after 20 years as his personal secretary, I feel I know Sir Dennis better than anyone. In fact, I'm going to buy a new hat for the occasion. Mm -hmm. And if he doesn't propose, I'll jolly well eat it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good luck, Miss Fennel. She's so excited. She's like a young girl. Yeah, well, this lunch will put years on her. Why did you have to encourage her? Why shouldn't I? Well, she's got it all wrong. He's not planning to marry her. Well, why is he taking her out, then? Well, he, he's getting rid of her. He wants to break the news gently. Oh, poor Miss Fennel. I hope she doesn't eat too much. Why? She's got to leave room for that hat. <laughs> well? What? What do you think? What about? It's all over the building. What is? The gossip. Miss Fennel's got the boot, and guess who's stepping into her shoes? Who? Whatever Lola wants, Lola gets. Lola fresh pots. <laughs> Phil Potts. Oh, Phil Potts, yes, of No course. wonder she dropped me like a hot potato. She was after bigger fish. Fish? Oh, Sir Dennis is more like an old walrus. Well, she <laughs> certainly got her hooks into him. She even gave Lola the afternoon off to avoid any unpleasantness while she cleared out her desk. Unpleasantness? So Miss Fennell took it badly, then? Well, rumour has it she didn't eat anything at all, but Sir Dennis had six courses all dumped in his lap. <laughs> Come in. Any chance of a lift home? Well, why can't Beatty drive you home? Ah, well, um, there's a little problem with your car. Uh, what sort of little problem? Just one or two things have to be straightened out. Uh, such as? The, the bumpers, the radiator, the wing <laughs> mirror. <laughs> Someone hit the car while we were in the cinema. At the cinema? Yes, we couldn't find anything we really wanted in the shops. Thank God for that. 
And then Beatty decided she wanted to see that film at Cinema 2, mm. Falling in Love. Mm. Did you enjoy it? It's hard to tell. There was too much competition from the couple in front of us. <laughs> I don't know what rating the film was, but they were definitely adults only. Well, <laughs> you should have moved. Yes, I did suggest that, but Beatty was enjoying them more than the film. Mm. <laughs> no, no, come in. <laughs> You're supposed to say, who's that? <laughs> no, no. Who's there? Fennel. Fennel who? Fennel he caught the bush. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's all right, Miss Fennel. Would you like to sit down? Oh, thank you so much. Uh, do, just wait until I get you to a chair. Yes. Do, do you know, why the security men had the audacity to say that I'd had a few drinks, I said, how? Oh, Day. Oh, good for you. A few drinks be damned. I'll have a bucket of the stuff. <laughs> yeah, he didn't ask me to marry him after all. He wants me to look after computer records. I don't know anything about computers. I, I thought there were people who came from Watford. <laughs> You're thinking of commuters. I'm thinking what a nitwit I made of myself. Having my hair done and buying this stupid, ridiculous hat. He loves me. He loves me not. He loves me. He loves me not. Oh, Mr. Medford, mm. I've had her personal stuff moved to computer records, and now I really do need her key to Sir Dennis's private safe. Can't you wait a bit? She's a little upset. Yes, as a newt. I'll get Sir Dennis' <laughs> chauffeur to drive her home before she causes any more embarrassment. I didn't know he had a chauffeur. Oh, just been hired on my recommendation. And do try to get the key off her before she goes, will you? Terry, that girl. Oh, yes, Miss Philpott's, uh, Miss Fennell's replacement. I bet she won't do his laundry for him. I bet his chauffeur won't either. I, I said to him in the restaurant, I said, from now on you can do your own dirty washing. I said, this is the last time I'll shirt your starches. <laughs> I'm leaving on my own two feet. What? Uh, are you sure you wouldn't like Terry to see you to the lift? I wasn't going to take it. Thought I'd just chuck myself out of the window. <laughs> you weren't doing anything silly, Miss Fennell. Don't you worry. I want to be here when that little madam lets him down and he comes crawling back on his hands and knees, begging me to come back to him. And I shall snap my fingers in his big, fat face. And I shall say... Of course I will, <laughs> <laughs> darling little man. <laughs> Poor old thing. You know, I'm almost positive. What about? That girl. Hmm? She was the one in the cinema. What? One half of the snoggers? Well, is it possible? Well, Sir Dennis did give her the afternoon off in case there was an unpleasant scene. You should have seen the scene she was making in the cinema. Oh, I just saw that dreadful woman leaving. Do you mean Miss Fennel? Oh, Mrs. Medford, that's the last time I ever asked your husband for advice. What? Taking her out to lunch was a devastating mistake. I still think it was a kind thought. It would have been kinder to write the message on a brick and chuck it at her. <laughs> Ridiculous woman actually thought I was going to propose to her. <laughs> Did uh, Miss Philpott manage to get the key off her? Miss Fennel was so upset, Miss Philpott's decided to wait until later. Really? Oh, that shows a sympathetic nature, don't you think so? That's what first attracted me to Miss Philpott's. Attracted you? Hmm. But as it, 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 a possible replacement for Fennel, I mean, I, I was working late in the office uh, one evening, and it just so happened that Miss Philpott was working late too. Oh, what a fortunate coincidence. Mm. And then, as we went down in the lift together, she said, I look tired. She said, I looked like her father. He'd been dead a few years. <laughs> Crikey, you couldn't have looked that tired. In life, I looked like him. After that, we just kept bumping into each other. Yeah, but there's not much room in that lift. <laughs> I mean, we kept meeting whenever I was entering or leaving the building. Another fortunate coincidence. I must confess that I, I began to look forward to those little encounters, and now it seems the feeling was mutual. Uh, Sir Dennis, when you spoke earlier about the possibility of remarrying, you weren't, I mean, uh, it wasn't, you weren't thinking of, I mean, you can't, you can't have meant, uh, can't have meant what? You, you 
can't have meant anybody to know about it until you were jolly well ready. <laughs> true, true, Mitford. But everyone will have to know about it eventually. I am considering a proposal of marriage to the young woman. But Sir Dennis... Oh, I know that she's very young. And I am rather... Old, sir. <laughs> mature. Oh, very, sir. Very, very mature. But she says it doesn't matter. Besides, she's all alone in the world. She's not that alone, Sir Dennis. You should visit Cinema too occasionally. June? <laughs> have you mentioned your feelings to her? For all you know, there may be someone else. I have made known my feelings to her, and she assures me that I am the only man in her life. When did you last speak to her? I think when I ask for her hand, I shall not be refused. Sir Dennis, there's something you must know. This afternoon. This, this afternoon her, 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 has made June and I very, very happy. Oh, Terry? Mm. I want to tell Sir Dennis what I saw in the cinema. Uh, a, a film called uh, Falling in Love, but it, it's not your cup of tea. <laughs> I'm positive that your Miss Philpott would love it, on the other hand. And, uh, <laughs> and with a title like Falling in Love, it couldn't be more appropriate. So, again, sir, our warmest, our warmest congratulations. Oh, well, thank you very much, Bedford. <laughs> Mrs. Bedford. <laughs> Why wouldn't you let me tell him? Well, I mean, that could be a perfectly innocent explanation of what happened in the cinema. Oh, innocent? Well, I mean, she could have fainted and somebody was giving her the kiss of life. <laughs> or perhaps it was a relative she hadn't seen for a long time, a, a brother, say. If that was her brother, there's even more to worry about. Yeah. Well, it's not our worry, so just forget about it. Let Sir Dennis look after his own mistakes. I'm looking for a Miss Fennel. Oh, yes, she decided to go home on her own. Oh, right. Excuse me? Are you the new chauffeur? That's right, madam. Just started this afternoon. We hope you'll be very happy working here. I've certainly enjoyed myself so far. <laughs> oh, Betty has. Why? He was the other half of the snoggers. <laughs> Sir Dennis has finally officially announced his engagement. He's put a letter in the personal column. Is this the evening paper? Terry, <clears throat> I know you've forbidden me to say anything personally to Sir Dennis. But that doesn't rule out an anonymous letter, does it? <laughs> it's taken me hours to cut that lot out. Mm. Dear Sir Dennis. Well, that's from the letter page and an article about Mrs. Thatcher. The future looks <laughs> bleak. The weekly horoscope. The girl you plan to marry. The agony column. Is playing around. Golfing supplement. <laughs> In fact, not to mince matters, she's a little tart. Where does that come from? The cookery section. <laughs> the cookery section? This is a recipe for disaster. So Dennis is happier than he's been in years, and you're not going to rock the boat. But we must warn him. If Lola Philpotts is having an affair with a new chauffeur before they're even married, what is she going to do for an encore? Well, it's none of our business. And I don't want to hear another word about Sir Dennis, chauffeurs, Philpotts or sex pots. Is that clear? Clear as a bell. Then go and answer it and leave me to read my newspaper in peace, right? Right. Right. Oh, dear. Oh. <laughs> Miss Fennell, do come in. Oh, I do hate to disturb you, Mrs. Bedford, but I desperately need your husband's advice. You see, I've discovered discrepancies in Miss Philpott's personal records, and I'm afraid that if I go to Sir Dennis, he'll think it's spite. I'm sorry, Miss Fennell, Terry is in, but he's just said he won't listen to another word on the subject. Oh, dear. Can I help? Can you confide in me? Mrs. Medford, this is a private departmental matter. I simply couldn't blurt it out in the open like that. I'm so sorry. That's quite all right. Uh, let's go in the kitchen. I'll tell you all about it. <laughs> You're sure Sir Dennis will be alone? He always works through the lunch hour. He's de so devoted to the company. Right. <laughs> I don't think he's in. He's probably deeply engrossed in his work. Oh, yes, I can hear he is. <laughs> Sir Dennis? Sir Dennis? Oh, just five minutes more, Nanny. <laughs> what? Don't uh, uh, oh, Mrs. Medford, what the devil are you doing here? I'm sorry to wake you, Sir Dennis. Wake me? I wasn't asleep. I always do my best thinking lying on my back. It was Winston Churchill's old survival code, you know. Oh, what was? How to deal with the stress of leadership. Remember, 
Never stand up when you can sit down. Never sit down when you can lie down and go to the lavatory as often as possible. <laughs> so what do I owe this pleasure? I'm afraid it isn't a pleasure, Sir Dennis. Oh, really? Why, I thought you rather liked me. Well, but I do. That's why I'm here. Because you like me? Yes. First of all, you must understand, Terry doesn't know I've come to see you. Doesn't he? And he mustn't know. Mustn't he? <laughs> but there's something I've been wanting to tell you for some time. Yes, sir. <laughs> Frankly, Sir Dennis, Lola Philpotts is not the woman for you. Is that so? Especially when so near at hand there's someone whose devotion to you borders on adoration. <laughs> Mrs. Medford, <laughs> oh, may I call you June? Oh, yes, of course. June, how long have you nursed this secret infatuation for me? <laughs> well, it's very flattering. It's, it's not me, Sir Dennis. It's Miss Fennel. Fennel? Yes, she's found out that Lola Philpotts has been telling you a pack of lies. Lies? Well, far from being alone in the world, she comes from a very large family in North London with a rather unsavoury reputation. <laughs> and more than that, she's been married before. She's what? To a storeholder in Berry Park. <laughs> same I hate talking behind people's backs, but Lola has not been honest with you. I can't believe it. I'm afraid you must. It's all true. Lola! I was so afraid of losing you. Can't you see? Oh, do I mean that much to you? And is it a crime to keep silent about a, a father who drank and an ex-husband who beat me? Beat you? I still have the bruises. Do you want to see them? Oh, no, 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 no. Well, at least not yet. <laughs> You do believe me, don't you, Denny, darling? Denny, darling? Well, of course I do, my little lolly. Miss Philpots, I saw you and the new chauffeur in a highly compromising situation. I told Sir Dennis all about that. Yes, that's why I sacked him. He kept pressing his attentions on me. From where I was sitting, you were pressing right back. <laughs> Ghost, Medford. Ah, Miss Fennel, I'll just kick my shoes off for a couple of minutes. Oh, it's absolutely dreadful. Oh, I'll put them on again, then. <laughs> Your wife went in to tell Sir Dennis the truth about Miss Philpotts. Oh, no. But she didn't get very far. Oh, good. Because Miss Philpotts came in in the middle of it. Oh, cracky. Don't upset yourself any further, my dear. I'm sure Mrs. Medford meant nothing malicious. Oh, it's so sad, Denny, darling. Well, I hate making enemies of anyone, especially older women. <laughs> I'm sorry, Mrs. Medford, but it's obvious that Fennel put you up to discrediting that poor, innocent child. Innocent child? She makes Joan Collins look like Mary Poppins. <laughs> Ah, Miss Philpotts, I was looking for my wife. She's next door with the old goat. What? And in future, you tell her to keep her fat mouth shut. How oh, dare you? If anything, my wife's mouth is pleasantly slim. And so are your chances of survival in this company, understand? I've got Hodge wrapped round my little finger. <laughs> the old fool is so besotted, he'll do whatever I say. He already swallows any half-witted story I care to hand him. Do I indeed? I only have to snap my fingers and the old twit will kick you out so fast the ink will still be wet on your redundancy check. <laughs> Mr Medford's just looking for his wife. I'm here, Terry. Miss Philpott. Yes? The old twit would like to see you now in his office. Old oh, twit? <laughs> What do you mean, Denny, darling? Don't you call me Denny, darling! <laughs> Terry, that was brilliant. What was? Switching on the intercom like that. But I didn't... Oh! <laughs> <laughs> oh well, trust me to get to the bottom of things. 